so close. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for coming out for this dual recording and stream of my Kerbal Space Program career mode. I've had great fun, and now I'm going to go and edit this footage together. I will see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> stop the stream, stop the record. No. guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. My name is Twitchy and as you just saw in that intro skit, I managed to not record any of the gameplay that I did on stream last Tuesday. But don't let that discourage you like it did for me for a couple of days because we, through the medium of voiceovers and recreations, are going to tell the story anyway. After loading the game out, the contracts that were available to me, well there was one that was just staring me at the face right at the very top. That was the Collect Science Mission. In stream I thought this was a stock contract. Actually looking at it on the page there, no. It very much is the first one for Scansat. We're going to grab that one. And I also thought, hey, I've got these modded parts. I've only got one set of modded parts. Let's make use of the modded parts. The Scansat mission. We're going to go get some altimetry data. I think that's better than the multispectral one because I don't know what the multispectral one does. So moving on to the actual build, we need to make a craft that can meet all the requirements set out by the contracts. This of course means we need a, a ScanSat module for the altimetry, as I put on the back of the capsule there, and also some sort of science module. I'm going uh, for the Science Junior, I, I think it's the, the one that's going to give us the highest amount of science payback. And of course, because it's quite heavy and also quite explosive, I've put a lot of uh, parachutes on there to try and slow us down enough so that we, uh, we're not coming into re re-enter so hard that everything just blows up. Throw a standard liquid engine and fuel tank underneath and a big old uh, thud solid fuel booster underneath that. At this point it was recommended that if I'm going to send Bob Kerman to orbit I might want to think about putting a probe core on top of this rocket. The pilots of the Kerbal species have the ability to turn an autopilot on and keep their rocket pointed in a certain direction. Scientists lack this ability and a certain level of probe core has this ability. At this point in the build process I could not remember whether the Stay Partnik had the SAS control or not. So we carried on with the build, put down a whole bunch of solid boosters, four extra thuds down below and four of the hammers in the middle, trying to make sure that we had enough Delta V to get to orbit. 3,500 what we're aiming for. Quick deployment and test says no, the Stay Putnik does not have the SAS ability. Not to foreshadow too heavily, but the first attempt of this flight launches from a Woomerang. Woomerang launch site is further up from the equator than the KSC is. This means that when we're trying to get into a polar orbit, we will have not have to be fighting so much against the rotation of a Kerbin. Yeah, the first flight starts off pretty nominal. The beautiful view over the mountains of Woomerang is something to behold. Until eventually we come to our second staging, where we get, get rid of the final FUD a solid a booster. We don't go and fire up the, the hammers and for some reason an instability has kicked in and we are spinning wildly. So wildly in fact that Bob ends up passing out. When he regains consciousness, we can actually fire up our liquid engines and fly out of the situation, actually passing on to a, a fair approximation of a good suborbital path. But I decide no, we can do better. The first improvement I'm going to do is take out that middle stage. Those solid boosters there, they are causing a big problem. We are spinning out, we are making our pilot pass out, well our scientists pass out. This is not something that we can deal with. So I replaced the middle stage with a thud. I originally put the hammers on there to make the shape more compact. I think that might have been what was causing us some issues. And of course throwing down a bunch of fins to make sure that our center of aerodynamic pressure is well below our center of mass during the entire flight. And I had a part left over so I decided to throw a communication device on there. I I think all these uh, changes are going to work out well for us. Same day, different ship. Uh, we have reverted, so of course we're still in the same time zone. I want to take a moment to just blow my own horn a little bit here. What we're watching throughout most of this episode has been uh, reconstructions of flights, but this one I knew I would never be able to fly the flight path the same. So we are watching a weird Frankensteinian amalgamation of the stream video footage and the audio from a flight that I did try to match the, the profile from. Um, obviously, I didn't do so well, so I got my editing tools out and absolutely absolutely went to town on the audio here. Seven thud boosters have propelled this craft up and out of the atmosphere. Well, we're not out of the atmosphere quite yet. We are about 50 or coming up to 60 kilometers. As you can see, we are going to come out of the atmosphere with still quite a bit of speed. I'm going to go point myself over towards the horizon and wait 
wait for our velocity to take us up to Appwaps, the highest part of our trajectory. Up there we'll be making a burn sideways. Sideways because we are trying to make the point where we land on the planet so far in front of us that it isn't actually on the planet anymore. That's what orbit is. Minor instabilities in the burn where the antenna on the side of the craft is a little bit heavier than the other side of the craft where there is indeed a nothing. Thus when we burn there's an imbalance in our thrust and our center of mass and it tries to give us a bit of a torque round. We're trying to backflip over and because Bob's not a pilot he can't put the SAS on and just hold himself still but that's all over now and we get to cruise through the upper levels of, I mean I was going to say upper layers of the atmosphere we're not we're out of the atmosphere we're into vacuum we're in a space the closest area of space that we can get to I've turned my scanning radar on and we're having a look at the map to see what is actually being done we need to use the zoomed in map to even see the pixels uh, arriving on our screen that, that's that's okay it's a big planet you know it's going to take us a little while to go ahead and do so uh, and go and grab all the space science that we're after this is what we're actually here for everything else has just kind of been a little bit of I don't want to say filler but things that we're doing on our way to get the space science but the scanning uh, the scanning apparatus took a lot of power out of us uh, so much in fact that we, we don't actually have any SAS left or anything like that I remember that turning on the engines does give uh, does run an alternator so provides a little bit of power for our equipment to use I think it kind of works out well. I'll get a few more pixels down on the screen. But I really like to have some sort of pointing authority when we are making our way into the atmosphere. So I pick us up enough to be able to both grab some extra power, but also get into the orbit we're after. If I had to pick a feature of almost any planet to fly over and just be in awe of, I think I have to say the polar caps are the one. It's just the massive expanse of ice. It looks different. It's a great big feature on the top of a planet. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the one to go for. So at this point, I'm noticing that our orbit is going to try and take us over the top of the KSC. And if I could land at the KSC, I would feel super swag. So I am all about trying to make that happen. Unfortunately, I have uh, kind of neglected to notice that the ScanSat is eating all my power at this point. So every time that I try and get some sort of orientation on the go, the electric charge wears back down. Though, of course, I do uh, correct that action and uh, make it so that we can keep some SAS power. My main concern is the rotational rate of Kerbin at the moment. I am going to take a little bit of time to travel down from the poles down to where Kerb, uh, the KSC is on the equator of Kerbin and during that time Kerbin is going to rotate a little bit under me so I'm trying to make sure that the two uh, line up uh, my orbit and where the KSC is going to end up. At this point I recognize a folly in my plan to come down on the Terminator that is the line between night and day. It's uh, rather hard to see. Thankfully the plasma heat of the atmosphere as I smash into it and near enough at two kilometers a second they're rubbing air molecules and my spacecraft together two explosive results creating so much heat that actually all of my science all of the science got blown up this this was a very sad day for both myself and Bob Kerman as that was actually the entire purpose of of that mission. We've managed to get ourselves the, the crew report and I suppose we had a proper orbital flight so I, I'm going to keep this flight for now. We're not going to revert it. It looks, you know, we're, we're pretty much done. My good buddy, friend and fellow YouTuber Lance Schroeder has just started streaming his playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. He's doing essentially an Iron Man. He hit all the hardest settings and then I told him some buttons to press to make it even harder. And I've got to say, I, I'm very conscious now of my, uh, my ability to revert all the time. going to act upon the lessons we have learned. Coming back into the atmosphere is the hardest part. We can just ask the Kims. They are having a bit great trouble with this as all well. So we're going to go ahead and uh, heat protect all of our science experiments. I've got to put them inside a payload bay there. Uh, in fact, taking the opportunity now that we've got a bit of space to uh, run out a whole bunch of more batteries so that we can get a lot more altimetry data sorted. The big problem that I've got is the pointing mechanism. Uh, without the scientist's ability to look in one 
certain direction, we are uh, running high risk of being uh, able to expose the side of the materials bay to the friction of re-entry. And this is what's been causing us a lot of trouble. So I have also scaled back the size of my rocket. We do not need to be going to orbit. We can just get up out of the atmosphere, get some space science there, and come back down and be safe. It's probably the safest way of doing so. And just because I wanted to get a little bit further, we'll throw some hammers down on the bottom. Bob Kerman in the desert launch site. We are taking off and rock rocking our way into the atmosphere incredibly quickly. Those hammers get burnt out very, very fast and the thud follows along pretty quickly as well. We're going to hold on to the thud for its mass as I keep trying to drive home. If you are heavy but have the same cross-sectional area as the light version with that cross-sectional area, you will go further as the amount of drag is, the same, is related to the cross-sectional area, not how heavy you are. Now that we are safely up and out of the atmosphere, we're going to use our remaining liquid stage to burn out sideways. This serves two functions. First, it is a safety feature. We uh, are going very fast. If we come down almost directly vertical, then might not be enough atmosphere to slow us down before we hit into the ground so I like to do that just to be safe and secondly to give us enough time to do all the science that we need to do talking of science that we need to do this scan set module is running so I've turned off the battery on the internal capsule so that we have a little bit of energy for re-entry if we do manage to drain it through all the batteries though looking at our trajectory here we are already getting back into the atmosphere so maybe that is not going to be something that we really need to worry about coming in nice and slow as we are we are 1.3 kilometers as opposed to the two and a half as we were coming in from orbit so everything goes nice and slowly we have no significant heating to worry about the parachutes come out wonderfully at about 10 kilometers up Bob looks to be having the time of his life even though he sometimes looks like he's a little bit worried the scan set has indeed got itself a whole bunch of pixels on it though I've got to be honest with you when I go and have a look at the uh, contract later we are still at a whopping zero out of 75 percent splashdown happens eventually and we take the science that we got from this mission and we open up plane parts. There is a significant fraction of KSP players out there that only really use this for planes. Uh, they normally have quite a heavily modded game though. Uh, and so I think we're going to do a little bit of appeasement for them. We're going to take a jet out, a jet of some description. Anyway, we only have access to the tiny little jet engines there and we need to figure out a way of attaching them. Now, of course, uh, we could just use the tiny fuel tank and I totally didn't forget that it existed at this point, honestly. But we, the recommended way is the tiny fuel tanks to put the air, small air intake at the front and the jet engine at the back and then we'll try to figure out what is the best way to lay out all the the wings and tail planes and the engines and stuff there are many ways to go about it and most of them do not look good but eventually chat came to my rescue and was like you should you should probably use the swept wings i was like you know what we probably should use the swept rings the problem that we've got is that this configuration we have already used all 30 of our parts and we've not put down a single piece of landing gear yet which does obviously lead to some problems when you're trying to take off and uh, land. Another issue with this current iteration of the design is the fact that literally all it can do is take a Kerbal from A to B. And that's not really all we want our planes to be able to do. Uh, well, I mean, kind of. We want it to be able to take a scientist from A to B, but also a whole bunch of science equipment with it as well. So we're going to put a, a science materials bay in line with it, put the uh, mystery goo on top and a barometric and temperature sensor on the side, completes the package. And because I know I'm not the greatest at landing, I went and threw some parachutes on there to slow us down when we're getting close to the floor. Bob Kerman, premier scientist on the planet of Kerbin, it turns out, is in the hot seat this time. I say this time, we put him in there quite a bit as he's the one who's actually going to be doing the flight during the actual mission. So I like to make sure that we test with him. Uh, honesty time is uh, a reconstructed footage. I've had to put this together because uh, plane noises are hard to splice together over the top of stream footage. So I just went and recorded this in a different one. The uh, big problem with this plane is a uh, shaky hand scientist cannot keep this plane in the air. It has, it turns out, got just enough for us to keep it up, but... Bob Kerman does not have the skills to keep it steady enough. He's uh, shaken, but not particularly injured. No no big problems. We may have crashed, but I do definitely see a glimmer of hope in that design. So I've gone and grabbed ourselves a few focused temperature survey uh, contracts, and we've come into the space plane hangar to do one particular very important thing. That's right, replace that end cap with another engine. For this next segment, I don't have any reconstructed footage, but I do have the footage from the stream. Unfortunately, I don't have reconstructed footage, so I don't have the reconstructed audio. So instead, if I just get out this hairdryer here, uh, I turn... 
Be beautiful. Let's see if we can get the mission done with this noise. So as our mission markers are underneath the south edge of the mountains, uh, we spend most of our time trying to bank ground to begin with and also trying to trim our tailplane. I'm not sure if you can see that there seems to be a minimum amount my tailplane is now uh, twisting. That is because uh, if you press down Alt and either S or W, uh, Kerbal will hold that position for you. And this has enabled me to get Bob flying the plane nicely. We fly to the three separate markers where we need to get the temperature reading, of me, all the requirements for our contracts, and I go for around flying, testing for different crew reports, trying to find where the mountains are. Here are the mountains, so we're going to try and put down very, very gently over in this valley over here. I pop out the parachutes, and uh, I mean, that was inevitable, wasn't it? Thankfully, as always seems to be the case, Bob manages to walk away completely unscathed, grabs himself a whole bunch of mountainous biome science. This is great. This means that we can be starting to work towards the solar panels and fuel systems that we really need need to expand our space program's reach. We've been doing a lot of contracts recently that grow our science, but we've not been doing too much that grows our PR presence. And if NASA has told us anything, the best way to get additional funding is to get the people involved and make them want to give you some money. Unfortunately, our space program lacks either the monetary funds or the part budget to be launching billionaires into space from the underside of planes, so we're going to have to go a one step down from that. Wondrel is the name of the craft. A misreading of a Polish word that I saw in chat thought it sounded hilarious. We are also in a sandbox save. That's why the KSC is all at max level there. We have a tourist on board played today by actor Kerman. Looking at the actual stream footage, you can see how far we need to travel. And the craft that we have got here is uh, per perfectly capable of uh, making it. Actor, I think, will be showing up in a fair few segments as we go forwards. Anytime that I need to reconstruct footage that maybe didn't look as good as I would like it to or something like that, I will try and use actor to, uh, to make it very, very obvious that things are not not legit. Okay, coming in for re-entry, you can see that the onion pod on the underside there immediately went black. That is because I took all the ablator off there to try and save some weight. Uh, in the original footage, I actually managed to save a little bit of fuel coming down so I could deorbit it a little bit safer. This time I didn't, but we used the aerodynamic uh, movement of the craft to be able to slow ourselves down enough to be able to deploy a parachute. A parachute that actually opened like really scarily close to the ground hit quite hard but we said we were safe Whilst this episode has been mainly focused on the science we've been gathering, it is not the only thing to be doing in career mode. There is a lot of other things that we need to progress and expand, and the one that we're going to be focusing on right now, thanks to the tourism contracts, is to be upgrading our buildings. We're going to first give the astronaut complex so we can get our Kerbals out of the craft on EVA. It was overwhelmingly the choice that chat wanted. And also we could get a mission control, because more contracts means more money, means more science, means more everything. One last mission before we go, and this one we discover a new Kerbal 1.12, a secret within. But first, I would like to take a moment to thank all of my patrons. The list of people running up the screen right now are the people that have decided that it is worth trying to support me on this wonderful platform. It takes a little bit of effort to go through and make these Kerbal episodes, especially when you're an idiot who does things like not forgets to record all of the footage. This episode took an awful lot of effort and an awful lot of time to produce, and it is thanks to the generosity of my patrons that I can actually take the time to do so. If you would like to help out, links are down below. But what is this plane all about? Well, Landstrider was watching the way that my craft was absolutely not handling well, rocking all over the place. He was like, hey, my friend, if you were using a pilot, that would make a lot of sense. But really, what you should be doing is having much more uh, wing control at the back so that you have a much more stable flight. I took his advice and went out on a little test flight, taking Bob Kerman with me, of course, because he was the guy who was probably going to do a most of the flight. And having a quick chat with a chat, I decided that maybe going up to Ben Bay would be the way to go, just to, just to make sure we could actually fly this craft as well as we could. I spent a lot of time trying to trim the craft well, and one thing that I have observed is when you've uh, set some trim up on the craft, you can see my pitch is constantly just a little bit pulled back. Uh, it becomes a little bit more rocky on the controls. It likes to, uh, to roll left and right. As I'm coming in for a landing on the sand over here so I can get some shore-based science, I know Notice that there is a building over on the side. Now, I am like, I have never seen this before. And it surprises me so much that we end up uh, killing Bob. But that's all right. We go and revert the flight when we take off and get back to where we were. Uh, I think it's time for us to go in a little bit slower. Maybe you make use of the parachutes that we've got and see what this building is all about. 
The yellow text at the top proudly displaying you found Cove launch site. You can now just deploy craft from here, go to the VAB and check the drop down for the launch button. I'm like, what? I didn't know that this did this. I thought we were just given the launch sites that we had anyway. But with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, it's a little bit shorter than normal this time, but I'm sure we will make up for it next. I will see you next time where we're going to move on to get our solar science and hopefully our fuel system science. We really, really need to be able to explore further out, but I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!